Hello, and welcome to my 11th devlog video for Kijimin Windborn Kin. Now, on this update, I have a significant um, visual improvement to present to you guys in the form of new ships exploring the world of Una. So, I'm going to go ahead and load file here. You'll notice some major changes. <laughs> um, uh, this big ship here is an Argentian battleship. <laughs> it's very large, and we are currently in Argentis right now. So you'll see that there's a lot of ship art here. Um, I'm going to go over most of it and what the... Uh, what the system is like. He was turning around there to find his uh, new destination. We're gonna get some events as well. I have it turned on. So if we go into the ship loadout viewer, uh, you can now see that there are different images depending on the nation the ships are from. Argonon has these uh, greenish sails and a um, lighter wood. There's a white wood for chroma ships, and they have red sails. So as we go down, Cooper Cow has a copper color scheme. De Nova has white ships, white and gold ships. Fraction has red and white sails with uh, more connective points there on the between the nacelles. For the ships themselves on the overworld map, you'll see that uh, because I'm in the nation of Argentus, um, all of these ships are Argentian in design. So if we pass through this, we see that there are um, blue, gray, purple ships here. And all of them, these have uh, fixed, fixed metal wings and they have battleships uh, moving around. Now, these aren't to scale. Um, the ships on the overworld map are actually one 1,000 scale, so it's blown up a thousand times normal size, just so you can see them, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the ships at all. But I'm going to take a little journey across Una and show you that the ships change depending on their location in the overworld. I'm gonna fly toward um, Cooper Cow, I think. So we're going to go over there and see what ships we, uh, we find along the way. And I'll explain um, why they are there. If they're um, nations that are going across the world. Some of the nations are roaming around. Um, every one of the 20 nations in the game has a percent chance to leave their home nation for trade purposes. So a lot of the time they will remain at their home nation. Like for example, here's a Luminian ship and it's trading between Luminian cities. So he's uh, staying at half hoist. He's gonna stay at half hoist for a couple seconds and then eventually leave. We're gonna get a couple of events in that time. We're gonna follow him as he goes off to do a thing. So it's kind of hard to see because I have the armada uh, of ships here, but uh, he's parked at half hoist. So they can stay there for um, a random period of time uh, between, I think, 10 and 30 seconds. So we'll see if, okay, there he goes. So he's going off to some city. Um, they have a, um, a large chance to leave Lumine because they don't have a lot of supplies. So they are going to a foreign nation to get more supplies. So they're going out. You see here is a Raydefian ship. So Raydef is crossing over somewhere, probably to an Argentine city for war purposes. And we're gonna pass through Raydef on the way to Cooper Cow. So we have Radalink, which is uh, Luminian territory. We're gonna fly into Radef. 
So this update adds 130, okay, sorry. It adds 109 chip designs, totaling 113. Um, it may look at first glance that a lot of these are just recolors, but they're really not. Um, all of the ship designs are in fact unique in some way. They have some difference um, that isn't just a, uh, a color change. It could be a change in, um, small change in design, position of the nacelles, um, additional technologies, additional engines even sometimes. So that's something to look out for. Um, this has uh, this has a um, looks like it has a single engine on back here, and this one has two engines. So there's an example. So this is um, Crystal Reach, which is a redefined territory, and we'll see that uh, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of Caprician ships leaving Cooper Cow as we get closer to Cooper Cow, because uh, Cooper Cow tr has a high trade chance. So there are a lot of um, ships coming out of that nation doing a lot of trade. So every in uh, again, every nation has their own probability to perform trade actions and to uh, choose a new destination. So um, all of the ships are in their tend to stay in their local area. So this Ray Death in ship will stay in Ray Death generally and then sometimes leave Ray Death. So as you explore the the nation, they they do some things. This is a um this is a Sorcilian carrier or a Sorcilian Sor battleship. And Sorcilius is actually an enemy of Ray Death. Um, so they're coming through to do um, reconnaissance of Ray Def and then return home. So that's interesting. I didn't think I would catch that on camera. That's actually not uh, a common thing to occur. So um, all of them have a, again, small percent chance to do particular actions while they're on the world map. The, uh, the ships always have done this. Uh, the, the nation's have always had this behavior programmed in them, but the player would have never been able to see that behavior until now, because the ships didn't really look different. And so you couldn't really discern what nation they were from. So as we're coming into Cooper Cow, you can see that we're gonna see more Caprician ships, probably a lot. This one is um, doing some trade, probably with Redef, based on his direction of travel. So the um, the ships are actually scanning their their environment. They're going back and forth across the horizon, and if you look closely, you'll kind of see the front like jiggle a little bit, like right there. Hold on, we'll see there. <laughs> see, he, he, uh, it kind of like just goes pink, 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 a little amount. They're actually looking for nodes that are invisible to the player, and they're pathfinding using those. They're using some um, uh, decision making to to try to stay along the skyways. They are not. Uh, it's not like a star search or anything. They're they're just well going through the way uh, the waypoints. They're going to the closest waypoint they can find that's in the general direction of where they're pointing already. So we're gonna try to talk to some of these ships here. So I've added some dialogue events. I was planning to finish all of them before I published this new update, but I just wasn't able to finish them in time because I spent a lot of time on these ships. This is a, looks like, um, um, an um, Argononian ship is going towards Argonon, which is this way. So they're flying back home towards Argonon. Um, the same ship I have now. So this Argononian ship uh, has performed trade with Cooper Cow and is traveling back to Argonon. So in the in the probability function that determines where they're going to be going, uh, they have a higher chance to go to uh, Cooper Cow because of their past history. They are not uh, allies or anything, but they uh, because they're they're neighbors. 
they will um, occasionally trade because of their proximity. So this is very complex behavior of these NPC ships have. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to this one and you'll see that it says that it's an old female Capretian merchant. Uh, I O I O. Again, I haven't, I haven't uh, typoed any of this text. I need to go through all of it and uh, check for typos. But uh, I O the um, port authority, the P A, five thousand Jimin because my ship ripped out a port tie. It's not my fault their tie wasn't secured properly. I had my sails up and everything, yet the wind pushed my ship out. And these do nothing currently because I haven't had time to program them. Um, and if I talk to the same ship again, um, I'll get a different dialogue that's the talk to the same person. There are multiple people on the ships, so you can talk to multiple people on the ships individually. Uh, it says, a young male Capricion merchant. My whole ship had been covered with these bra bracelets for years. None of the tourists, or tourists coming through uh, knows that, though. I barely sell a, to 100 customers a week, but they uh, sell do sell 20 to 30 gym in a piece tourists buy like 10 of them 20k a week ain't bad so this is a merchant ship um if you talk to, to the larger the ship you'll talk to i'm going to try to talk to this um uh this chroman military ship that's roaming around here um uh chrome chroma and um cooper cow are not uh are not allies they're actually competitors um so uh, he's doing something here. Uh, it could be, uh, it could be um, uh, gathering data or seeing what ships are around. I, ha I have no idea what he's doing. He, he has a, a large table of behaviors. But um, if I talk to it, it'll be a military ship. Uh, he's faster than me because he's got more engines. I'm going to go ahead and talk to him. It says, uh, young male Chromian soldier. Um, all of these, oh, young male, young female Chromian soldier, sorry. All of these guys are pigs, I swear. Makes me want to keep my mom's uh, 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 alleviate, um, uh just to keep, uh, keep covered in the military. No point because we have to uh, be in uniform. Uh, I ask uh, women, um, uh, ask why women have to wear dress skirts instead of pants. <laughs> so this person is upset with the, um, uh, with the way women are treated in the military. If I talk to them again, um, got the same, yep, getting the same uh, dialogue. There are more than one person on the ship. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's a merchant on board as well. It says, I'm sick of these drunken tourists coming from Listeria and on board. They treat me like some kind of meat put to market. Most of them assume I'm a prostitute. <laughs> I sell stoneware, like <laughs> WTF. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I am going to put as much dialogue in this as, uh, as humanly possible to make sure that uh, every time the player talks to a ship, they get some kind of new, uh, new dialogue option. There's a strong language of this game, as you can see through this video. Um, I just closed an event with some capitalized strong language, so um, it's around there. I... I'll tell you, I went through like a solid probably 40 hours of work over the last two weeks just doing the art for these ships. There is so much uh, art uh, for these ships now. Uh, the varieties are um, unique to every nation, and this world map is very large. So the national regions, there are now 20 distinct national regions. You'll see the ships in their home. Oh, so I hit the camera. Oh, so I hit the microphone. Um, there are, you'll see each ship group in their home nation, and uh, it, it all makes logical sense now. Uh, before, there was a couple bugs with the way uh, that the ships were traveling over the overworld. I've taken care of all of those bugs. I've tested it thoroughly. I went through probably five or six hours of testing all of these uh, all of these regions, and I had and I had I turned events off when I did that testing, so I made sure that everything was working okay. Um, there aren't um, many UI changes other than these uh, these ships being here. Um, I want this to be a finalized feature for the game, so all the ships are taken care of. I never have to think about it again and the dialogue is done. The next major step is to finish the dialogue for the overworld, which should take a couple of days. 
and then go through the laborious process of uh, working out the storyline um, structure, the branching narrative structure, and then testing all those branching narratives, and that should be my next update. Um, the player will be able to go through the narrative structure without the narrative actually being there. That way the players can test the, the path they actually have to move through the world without um, being spoiled the content of the story quests. So that'll be, that'll be in. I went over the story, uh, in order, before I get the story quest started, I have to get a journaling system finished. Um, make sure that this world map um, has the journaling features uh, attached to it so that the, the map shows the quest locations. And then once the journaling behavior is done, I can get all of the uh, character stat uh, tracking in and then start the story quest structure. So the, this game should have story quests finished, um, at least the, the outline for them from the start to the finish of the game by end of November. That's the hope. Um, and if we get to that point, I don't know if I will start a Kickstarter or not. Uh, probably going to do that. Um, just to raise some money for the uh, development of this game. It takes a lot of time to do that. Um, and I don't have... Uh, I'm, this is a huge time investment, honestly. Um, but uh, it's something I, can't, I can handle. I, I'll be developing this game regardless without financial assistance or not. But uh, if you are looking to help with the project, um, there you go. That will be your opportunity to do that. I'll make a video. Uh, showcasing um, the, an outline for the project and all of that. Now, something new that we're doing here is that I have a GitHub open for um, issue tracking for the game. So if I go to issues, uh, we can see now that's all of the features of the game, um, both current and future, are being tracked. Um, if I go under projects, I think it should, I don't think I have uh, the project set up. Uh, let me do that real quick. Under the project categories, you can see that I have um, features I might, might be working on in the future, uh, current bugs, uh, the to-do do list, for, oh, I'm holding down control. <laughs> Uh, the con uh, the to do list for the software, and that's uh, that's pretty long. Uh, we have prerequisites that are uh, mostly complete, but I still have to complete some parts of that. Uh, in progress features and completed features over here, and all those are listed here with no issues. So you can see that's all of the uh, features, qual qual quality of life uh, uh, pieces. All of it's listed here. So if you ever want to track any of that information, you can just go to my GitHub and go to the projects page, and it'll all be listed there with um, full detail. So, yeah, uh, that's it <laughs> for now. I also uh, moved the um, Keygem and Wiki from um, from Fandom.com to Mer uh, Um mainly because fa Fandom.com has implemented a terrible a uh, forking policy and um, their website was completely broken uh, over the last couple of days. I think it's still broken um, and it's a part of their uh, their ad platform it actually has a cross-site scripting exploit. So I am opting never to use fandom.com again. So it's been moved over to Mary Hayes. A uh, link to that will be in the description of this video. And uh, that's about all. Uh, this has been a long one. Sorry about that. Okay, thanks. Bye.